Okay, Michael asks, how did Israel overcome its Kantian foundations? Were the founders all Marxist Kantians? Why did they allow for private property? So Israel uh, did indeed, it was indeed founded uh, by intellectuals who are Kantian, uh, neo-Kantians, uh, leading neo-Kantians, German uh, neo-Kantians founded the Hebrew University in Jerusalem. Uh, the founders of Israel were socialists, former communists, um, or many of them were, not all of them, but many of them were. Uh, socialism was 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 a big part and a, and a significant part of the founding uh, of the Israeli state, and it was a, a, a quite socialist country. Uh, you know, it 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 embraced democracy, the the the, the rule of uh, of the majority, but it also uh, the political party that won election from 1948, when the state was founded, until 1977, was the Labour Party, the Socialist Party. But they were not communists. And I know some of you don't think there's a difference, but there is. Um, they recognized that they needed private property. They needed entrepreneurs. They needed business, whether small business or large industrial businesses, in order to provide the jobs, the, 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 the prosperity that allowed a society to grow. Socialists realize that they need private property and to create the right kind of incentives so that people create wealth, so that then they can tax that wealth away and redistribute it. But without the private property, the wealth is not created, and without the creation of wealth, there's no redistribution. And you can't help the poor. And uh, Israeli socialists at the beginning of the founding of this country were smart enough and knowledgeable enough about the history of Europe, about, uh, about how uh, socialism works, most of them had the experience of living in a kibbutz or working on a kibbutz or observing how the kibbutz worked and they realized that a kibbutz was not enough, a kibbutz was not enough of a productive engine to fuel a nation. So they allowed private property for practical reasons because, uh, well, two reasons. One, because they, they at some level believed in individual freedom and individual liberty. They founded a country that was basically free where people were free to live, to speak, to write, to debate, to argue, where they were free to uh, uh, challenge the socialists politically, um, which had multiple political parties, including pol parties that were, uh, uh, that were, that opposed socialism, and, uh, you know, from the beginning. And so they, they had a certain respect for private property, which they had gained in Europe and, and, and they, had, they believed in. So uh, as part of individual liberty. But they also believed that the state had a big role and the state uh, needed to, to, to have central planning and at some level and needed to, to invest in certain industries and that the state needed to redistribute wealth on a large scale. And the two don't conflict. I mean, you see the same thing. Uh, although at a, on a smaller scale than Israel, you see it in, in Scandinavian countries where there's a lot of private property, but then that private property is taxed, and those taxes go to massive redistribution of wealth uh, programs. So uh, anyway, that's, so that's, uh, that's why they had private property. I don't know how Marxist the founders were. I haven't really gone into uh, uh, once by 1948 how Marxist they were. Certainly in their youth, Almost all of them were Marxist to some extent or another, but by 1948, they were already adults, and I think they'd grown out of kind of the idealism of Marx uh, and were more uh, practical and more interested in survival and more interested in, in the flourishing of the Israeli state. They had real problems to deal with. And when you ask how did Israel overcome its Kantian foundations, in many ways it hasn't. In many ways, the Kantian foundations at the core of the mixed economy, in many ways, the Kantian foundations at the core of the, uh, not just tolerance, but, but adoration and, 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 uh, and groveling before the religionists, right? I think Kantianism leaves you completely open uh, to the power and the strength um, of, uh, you know, of uh, religion. Uh, so uh, I'm just looking at something here in the chat. Um, so, uh, 
they overcame the Kantian foundations because they had practical needs to fulfill. Uh, so, so yes, they're still Kantian in, in many respects, but they also want to survive and they also want to thrive and they also want to get rich and they also want to beat their enemies, other, i.e. survive. And in order to do all that, they have to be practical. In other words, there's a sense in which they have to be uh, Aristotelian. They have to be connected to reality. They have to use logic. They have to use reason. They have to solve problems. They have to build. They have to create. They have to make. And so it's not like they've rejected Kant for another philosophy. They are, what is it? Uh, 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 Kantians sometimes, Kantians uh, in, to some extent. Look, even Mises, Ludwig von Mises, the greatest economist who ever lived, was in many respects a Kantian. And his, his epistemology and his, his, his way of thinking is very influenced by Kant, and yet he comes up with the greatest economic theory in, ever, an explanation of economic phenomena anybody's ever come up with. So Kant doesn't... It's the extent to which you take him seriously. It's the way, extent to which you integrate him throughout all your knowledge. It's the extent to which you, you uh, accept duties and, and, and uh, categorical imperatives and, uh, uh, and, and faith, ultimately, uh, above reason uh, that determines to what extent you put Kant into action. And uh, most Kantians don't put him into action in that way. I mean, again... One of the problems with saying people are Kantian is that almost everybody bad in the world is Kantian. It's Kant and, and, and almost everybody is a Kantian in a sense because he dominates the philosophy so much. Um, and it, it, the manifestation of Kant are many because he opens up so many doors to bad things. Um, but Israel overcame it, I think, because of its need to survive and uh, its practical need, and its focus on that practical need. And they became, they adopted a kind of socialism that was prevalent in Europe that uh, basically combined uh, social welfare programs with uh, private property and private enterprise. Uh, and uh, it's a combination that didn't work very well until the 1980s, where the 1980s, the, the shift moved towards more private property, the shift moved... Uh, towards more individualism, there was a shift uh, towards uh, production and towards entrepreneurship and a breaking up of unions and, um, and, and, and breaking up of certain monopolies, although certain government-granted monopolies, although certain government-granted monopolies still exist in Israel, um, and a much a, a, a significant liberalization of the economy that happened in the 80s a little bit and then accelerated in the 90s. Uh, and that Israel has benefited enormous farm, uh, enormously from, although, uh, you know, nobody in Israel will recognize that. Nobody in Israel actually uh, says that. Thank you for listening or watching the Iran Brooks Show. If you'd like to support the show, we make it as easy as possible for you to trade with me. You get value from listening. You get value from watching. Show your appreciation. You can do that by going to iranbookshow.com slash support, by going to Patreon, subscribe star, locals, and just making a appropriate contribution uh, on any one, of those, uh, any one of those channels. Also, if you'd like to see the Iran Book Show grow, please consider sharing our content and, of course, subscribe. Press that little bell button right down there on YouTube so that you get an announcement when we go live. And for you, those of you who are ready subscribers and those of you who are ready supporters of the show, thank you. I very much appreciate it.